Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us tonight at tonight's very special shir with Rabbi Pesach Kron Shlita. This is being presented by the Chazak organization, the Talisman, in conjunction with Torah Anytime. We have a very special topic tonight. It's going to be an opening of a very brand new special series. Um, it's, the, 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 the theme of the series is called, It's Time to Daven. And um, our, this, is, um, this is going to be the first of um, Mir Hashem, um, a continual series of shirim on this amazing topic. And um, this is being um, dedicated um, L'Zecher Nishmas in memory of Dr. Feintoch Zatzal, um, Reb Tzvi Eliezer Moshe Ben Aaron Yosef. Again, L'Zecher uh, Nishmas, Lili Nishmas for the Neshama of Reb Tzvi Eliezer Moshe Ben Aaron Yosef. Um, Neshama should have an Aliyah from all the inspiration and learning that comes out of, of this amazing shir. Um, not only tonight, but we post it online and it's got so much impact. It should be a big um, uh, Neshama, um, Lezekha Neshama, uh, Aliyah for Neshama. And we want to thank uh, Mrs., uh, Mrs. Feintuch and the Feintuch family for dedicating tonight's special shir. And um, everyone, whoever's watching right now, you should tell your friends and family to either join in on the website or call in right now to the shir. It's to start momentarily. They can go on the website, toranytime.com slash live to watch toranytime.com slash live or they could call into the shir at 718-298-2077, 718-298-2077, extension 46. Again, 718-298-2077, extension 46. And we want to thank um, the Sano Epstein, I was just at his wedding um, this week, and um, it was such a great simcha to, to celebrate at, at, at his wedding with him and his, and, and his uh there's amazing mishpacha and, and the sounds of so much for the Jewish um, community. Um, he's uh, very involved with Project Sitzis, and um, the t and he's the, and he's the talis man. And for all your talis needs, and uh, if, you, if you know someone who uh, who needs to pair at um, um whatever it may be for uh, um, whatever whatever minhag ashma svar chabad whatever it may be, reach out to the sana for all your Judaica needs. Eight five six. 745-9588. You can reach him at 856-745-9588. And thank you, Nassau, for uh, working together with Chazak to initiate this amazing um, series together with your amazing family. Hashem um, bless you. And, um, and uh, we, without no further ado, um, it is our great honor to call upon you by Pesach Kron Shlito. Deeply grateful to the Feintuch family for having invited me to come to give the initial lecture and in what will be a whole series of lectures and drushes on the Inyanam of Tefillah. This is all being done with Nishmas, a wonderful man that I got to know a number of years ago when I traveled to Houston. His name was Dr. Howard Feintuch. His name in Hebrew was Tzvi Eliezer Moshe Ben Rabar and Yosef. I got to know him because I was spending Shabbos in Houston, and every time I went back there, I got to know the family even more. We became very close, and now, just a few weeks ago, Nebuch Dr. Feintuch was nifter, and the family felt, because he loved davening, and he loved tefillah so much, it was such an integral part of his life, that they are sponsoring these shiurim on the Nyanim of tefillah, and getting close to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Dr. Feintuch always came to shul 10 minutes early, always. He was never late to davening. He always came early, and he always encouraged his family members to do the same. One of the things that I couldn't get over was that he had lived in different areas. One of the places that he lived was in West Orange, and the home that they got was a little bit of a distance from the shul. Now, for Dr. Feintuch, it was no problem. Of course, he would go even on a Friday night if it was very cold. But there were some people, because they lived distantly from the shul, that they decided they would only go Shabbos morning. So what Dr. Feintuch did was he made a minion in his own house Friday night so that these people would have a minion to go to. He was a person who not only loved tefillah, but he had a beautiful voice. And for many, many years, when he lived in the Bronx, and then when 
He lived other places. They brought him to Connecticut. He was the Baal for Yom Neroim. And when he was in Houston, many, many times he would be asked to daven, Shabbosim and Yom Tovim. He was very mocked, but as we will speak later on, that there was a dress code in shul. He felt it's not right for adults to wear sneakers in shul or to wear jeans. Of course, his phone was never on vibrate in shul. It was off totally because he felt that you have to disconnect your phone to make a connection to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And near the end of his life, Nebuch, when he found it very difficult to walk, he still made it to shul. Whether he went in a wheelchair or whether he went by cane, he was always there. And you know, his wife told me, Helen, she was so devoted to him. And he was a chemical engineer. That's where he had his doctorate from. And he traveled all over the world. He was in 40 different countries. And every country that he was in, he always tried to daven with a minion as often as he could. So, of course, it makes sense that we should dedicate this year, L'Zecha Nishmasai, again, Rabbi Tzvi Eliezer Moshe Ben Aaron Yosef, and Hashem should bless his family for bringing these videos and presentations to the public. And I would like to thank a young Talmud Chacham, Ari Bennett, for videoing tonight. And uh, I know that he has a Chavrusa, but he came here to do this because it's Tzorch Tzibor. The Gemara tells us in Tainas Dav Beis Amud Aleph, La'avas Hashem alekechem la'ovdei b'chol avavchem. You have to serve Hashem with your whole heart. And Ezehi avoda shabalev. What is the avoda of the heart? Have a imezu tefila. That's tefila. And of course, it's so appropriate because Dr. Feintach was a person with an incredible heart. And you know what the Gemara tells us in Sanhedrin Kuvavam and Beis Hakadosh Baruch Hu liba boy. The Rabbanu Shlelem wants heart, and that's where we get the expression. Rashi uses it. Rachmana liba boy. The Abishta wants to see your heart. And how does he see your heart? He sees your heart through the words of tefillah, because tefillah is an emotional connection. It's not just verbalization of words, but it's your heart and your feelings and your emotion with which we make a connection to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And to me, it's absolutely incredible. You know, the Gemara says in Brachas, there are four things that you constantly have to work on and make sure that you're good at it. And it's interesting, one of the things is tefillah, and this is on Daf Lev. We just said, and this is Daf Lamed Beis, Amad Beis. It couldn't be any more appropriate Daf. And what does that mean? Because many, many times what happens is that we say the words and we know them by heart and we say them habitually, we say them by rote and we don't get a chance really to think about what we're saying. And that's what the Gemara is telling us. HaKadosh Baruch Hu Liba Boy. And you have to work on being machazik yourself to make sure that you're davening with Kavona. Now, there's a very interesting Gemara and this Gemara is also in Brachas. And the Gemara tells us like this, that... In Brachas Mem Zayin Amad Beis, La Oilam Yashkim Adam La Beis Haknesses. A person should try to be first in the shul, Kedeshe Yiske VeYimne Imasar Urishaynim. That he should be among the first ten that come to the shul. And the Marsha brings something very interesting. He says the why is it so important that a person is among the first ten? Because the first ten are the ones that bring the Shechina into. The the shul. Now Hashem's presence is all over, but when 10 people come together, there's a certain level of Kedusha that's there. And these 10 people, they get the schar of everybody else davening with the minion. They get that reward as well. Of course, those who daven with the minion get reward. But all those who come to the shul, the first 10, they not only brought the shechina, but they also have the schus of everybody davening with the minion. They get that equal schus as well. Now, over the years, I've had the opportunity to speak about tefillah many times, and I would always tell the following story. And the family, the, the Feintach family, asked me that I should say this story because this was one of the favorite stories of Dr. Feintach, and as you could see in a moment, you'll see why he loved it so much.
You see, we spoke about here about coming on time and being there, being among the Asar Rishonim, and of course, he was always among the Asar Rishonim. As we said, he came 10 minutes early before Davening even started. Now, the fellow who told me the story asked me I should never say his name, I should never say the city that he was in, or the type of store that he had. So we'll make it up and we'll say that it happened in Milwaukee in a furniture store, but it didn't happen in Milwaukee and it didn't happen in a furniture store. But listen to a great story that happened in a furniture store in Milwaukee. What happened was that this fellow, he's in his 20s, he owned the store, and he was there, you know, 9 o'clock he opened up the place, and by 10 o'clock he thought he smelled fire. Now, he didn't see the smoke yet, but he thought that he smelled fire, and he looked around, he didn't see anything, so he thought maybe he better check his basement. And sure enough, when he runs into the basement, he sees that the place is aflame. And now, the flames are now coming through the slats of the first floor, and he's yelling and screaming, and he's calling the fire department, and by the time that they were able to come, because the fire was raging so quickly, the desks were gone, and the furniture was gone and and the slats and the venetian blinds everything they could not save his store they just hosed it down but then the only thing that they were able to save was the next store now a few days after the fire he came to shul and he said to a friend of mine this is how i originally heard the story from this friend and he said the fellow who owned that furniture store said let me tell you what happened a couple days before the fire Somebody came over to me in shul and said, you know, every day you come to shul, but every day you come late. Why do you come late every single day? So I said to him, what's the difference? At the end, I come, right? He said, Hashem showed me a few days later. At the end, the fire department also came. So what good is that? At the end, I come is not really good enough. And... I'm not saying that everybody should come 10 minutes before davening, but certainly when davening is 7 o'clock, you've got to be there a few minutes before to put on your towels and fill in, because otherwise you, you're playing catch-up the whole time, and you can't possibly say the words with kavona. And that's why, that's why Dr. Feintag always came early. So you should be able to say every word carefully. At the end, I come is not good enough. And I, I want to tell you something that when I finally met this fellow, because as I said, I heard the f story from a friend of his, and who was a friend of mine as well, I said to this fellow, I want you to know that so many, many people have been inspired by your story, and by these words, at the end I come, that you don't realize what kind of schusim, of course it was very difficult for you to go through that. He told me it took months until they were able to put the store back together again, but the point is he certainly has a lot of schusim for the aggravation that he had, and that comment that he made, and it has made such a difference in so many, many people's lives. Now, there's another Gemara, of course, and this is also something that Dr. Feintuch always spoke about, and that's a dress code. The Gemara tells us again in Brocha Samach Beis Samach Beis, Lo yikones odom laharabayas, when somebody went to the Harabayas where the Beis Amigdash was, you cannot go veloi b'mois hatsurim b'sandinoi. There were many people that would put money in their belts, or they would have a money belt that would hang over their shoulder. And the Gemara says that's not the way to go into the Beis Amigdash. You know, everybody has money, we carry money, but it has to be in a place where it's hidden. Not that it looks like you're coming to do business in the shul. And because of this Gemara, and we see that there's a dress code, I always say that people on, on Shabbos, when they come to Davin Mincha, why, when, when did casual mincha start? Everybody who wears a suit and a tie to davening Friday night or Shabbos morning should be wearing the same thing by mincha. There's no such thing as casual mincha. And that's what we said before, that Dr. Feintuch was so upset when people would come to shul in jeans or if adults would come in sneakers. Okay, kids can come in sneakers, we understand that. And something that he was very mocked with, with his children and grandchildren, they should always come with a suit, a jacket, and pants, obviously, not just, you know, a shirt and pants to come to shul, but always to wear a jacket because he felt that was the Derech Eretz. So he was certainly, certainly very mockbid about a dress code. Now, I'll tell you something very interesting. 
I always wondered where did the word tefillah come from? And the morale tells us something remarkable. The morale says that we remember the story when Yaakov saw Yosef, he hadn't seen him after 22 years, for 22 years, and he says to him in Pasha's Vaychi, Bereshis Memches Yud Aleph, Ro'oi Fanecha Loifi Lolti. Seeing your face, Loifi Lolti, Rashi says, Loi Milani Libi Lachshav Machshava. I never even had a thought process that I would see you. In other words, what is Filolti? You see the word Filolti and Fil is the same thing? Lachshav Machshava, that's what it is. And then Rashi says, Filolti is Lashem Machshava, so that's thinking. In other words, it's not enough just to say the words. And I'll tell you something very interesting that I heard just recently. Rav Shach said, you know, there's a famous Gemara that says that maybe that's today the Sharei Tefillah could be closed, but the Sharei Demois are never closed. And we say that in the Musaf Ne'ilah. And why are the Sharei Demois never closed? You know why? Rav Shach says that you could say words, you say them by rote, and you're not even thinking about what you're saying. But when you cry, you're thinking about what you're doing. Nobody can cry and not think about what they're saying. That's why the share of tefillah are never closed. And that's exactly what we're talking about here. That's the essence of tefillah, to think about what you're saying. That's what tefillalti is. That's what tefillah is all about. And if that's the case, I want to tell you something that you'll be surprised. We know that in certain of the Sidurim, certainly the art scroll Sidurim today, there are extra words in the Shema Kaleinu and extra words in the Rufa'enu, but you'll be surprised what I'm about to tell you. The Shloha HaKodesh tells us, She'yechadesh divrei tachnunim v'shailos obakoshes b'ktsaz brochas atfilo em lo'ibukulam. In every single one of the paragraphs of Shemin Esra, you should add words. And because you're talking to Hashem, just like when I'm talking to you right now, and I'm thinking of every word that I'm saying. So when you're davening, that's the same thing. And therefore in Baruch Haleinu, don't we all know people that need Parnosa? And of course in, in Rifa'enu, it's, it's all good right today, especially, you know, when I'm making this presentation, we're still involved in the COVID-19 situation. So of course, there's so many people to daven for. And in Slachlonu, a person, or Reino von Yeno, and all the tzuras that we know that so many people have, you have to make a decision. You're going to have a very big meeting, and you want to say the right words. So, talk to Hashem. And as a matter of fact, the Rabbi Yudah Chosid writes in Sefer Chasidim, Simon Kuf Nun Ches, which is Simon 158, add in every single bracha, add something. Ki that's going to help you have more kavana, And that's something that we all have to know. Obviously, Hashem understands all languages. So, of course, you cannot skip the words in Hebrew. But you can add, and you ask your Rav, and he'll tell you exactly where you can add. Some people say you should add in Shema Kaleinu, or before Yil Rotzen at the end. But what Rabbi Yudah Chosid and the Shlah are telling you is that you could even add, even in the middle of Shemir Esra. And just like you're having a conversation with Hashem, so you could continue that conversation by using the words of the Heliga Chazal, but then using your own words to add to that, and that helps, of course, making the difference in connecting to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Now, I'll tell you another thing. I'm a very big believer of every person having their own sitter and trying to take it with you wherever you go. And the reason is because I'm a big believer in underlining expressions of tefillah. Now, for example, I'm going to tell you now two things that I have underlined in my sitter. And the reason that I have them underlined is because every single time that I see it, I want to remember the thought that I learned behind these, th these words. Now, I can't say that obviously every time that I see the words, and even though they were underlined, that I'm going to think about it. But one thing is for sure, you can't come to a shul or to a base, or base of medrash and take a, sh a sitter off the shelf and underline it. It can't deface property. But the point is, you certainly, if you have your own sitter and you make a note or two, so therefore that's machaven. It helps you have the kavona. Now, I just want to tell you something that I think should give us so much chizuk, especially in, in the times that we're going through, but in all times, as you'll see in a moment. We know in Baruch Shama. Listen to this story. 
I had a cousin, his name was Rab Kalman Dreben, never passed away already, and he heard this story from the Skalena Rebbe. The Skalena Rebbe would tell this story very often. Now, during the Second World War, the Skalena Rebbe was in Romania, and what he did, him and his wife, they were such tzaddikim and tzadkonias that they would hide many kids in their home, teenagers, boys and girls at different times so that they wouldn't have to go to the army, they wouldn't go to the concentration camps. And then nebuch nebuch, somebody snitched. Somebody told on them, and of course, the police were only happy to investigate and see if they could arrest the rabbi, and they did. And they saw that Hitaka harbored quite a few boys that were there, and of course he wanted to save them that they shouldn't go off to Derach and that they would remain from. And they threw him in jail and they put him in solitary confinement. And they told him that he's going to rot there until he dies. And they took away his yarmulke and they took away his glasses and they just left him there. Now, those of us who wear glasses know that without your glasses, if you need them, then you're totally disoriented. Now, the Rebbe, they say that every day when he davened Shem it took him close to an hour. The Tzibah never waited for him. But now that he was in jail, so he could dive even slow. He's not going anyplace, right? They said he's going to rot here, you know, until he dies. So he started davening very, very slowly. Of course, he knew the davening Balpeh. And he came to Baruch Shomar. This was the second or third day that he was there. And when he was saying Baruch Shomar, all of a sudden he had a question about the Lushen in Baruch Shomar, which I'll present to you in a moment. And he got so angry at himself. How in the world could he be davening all these years? And he never had this question before. What was the question? If you take a look tomorrow, or whenever you say Baruch Shema the next time, you'll see that Baruch Shema, everything, the mantra of Baruch Shema is positive. Baruch Shema Vo'ayoyelam, Hashem said there should be a world, and there was, right. Baruch Oyse Bereshis, Merachem Ala Oretz, Merachem Ala Briyes, Meshalem Sochotev L'Reyev, everything is positive. And then all of a sudden it says, Baruch Goizer Umakayim. The Ebishter makes a gzera and he's makayim the gzera. That's terrible. Now, sometimes Hashem has to make a gzera either on an individual or on a family, on a community. And he has to make the gzera for whatever reason. But that, that's not a positive thing. That doesn't belong in Bar Shama because everything in Bar Shama is positive. And the Rebbe said... Rupa don't let me out of here until I figure this out. How could this be? The Chazal that will convey on this beautiful lunch, and there has to be something positive here. And he kept on saying, Baruch Goizu Makayim, Baruch Goizu Makayim. And then he came up with a shot that is so unbelievable, and it's so inspirational, as you'll see in a moment. And he said like this, Umakayim doesn't only mean fulfill. Umakayim means it gives us kiyum. It gives us strength to exist. And that's the shot. Baruch Goize, the Eivishter is blessed. You know why? Because sometimes he has to make a gzera, but he gives us the koyach umakayim. Baruch Goize umakayim. He gives you the strength. You're going to make it. You're not going to be broken because of it. And we all go through difficult situations in life. And that's why in my sitter I have it underlined. So that when I see Baruch Goize umakayim, if I have to go through, or if anybody has to go through a difficult time, just look at those words and just know that if Hashem gave you that situation, you're going to make it through. That's why He gave it to you, because He also gave you the strength that you're going to be able to withstand it and not be broken because of it. So, but if you don't have it underlined and you're using a shul city, you don't even know you said it. And you don't even, certainly not even thinking of the meaning. But if you have it highlighted, right? If you have, you know, a yellow highlighter, which I always carry with me, you know, and I'm always underlining. So, it, it can make a difference. Now, I'll tell you another thing, which I once saw from a Chassidish Rebbe, which I love, and I think that this is such an important lesson in life. And we say in the Halukos, every morning, we give Hashem a praise, and we say, Haroifei Lishvurei Leiv. The Eibishter is the one who heals the brokenhearted. I don't have to tell you how many brokenhearted people there are today, but watch this. What are the first letters of those three words? Haroifei Lishavurei Leif. Hallel. That's praise. That's the greatest praise that you could say on somebody. That he has the capacity to be Haroifei Lishavurei Leif, to heal the brokenhearted. Now, we know so many people that Rahman al-Atzlan are so down and so broken. And our job is to help them. So when you're davening that in the morning and you see that underlined, all of a sudden you're going to remember, hey, wait a second, got to stop thinking about myself. i got to stop thinking about other people that are out there and they're feeling down. That's Haroifei Lishavurei Leif. And 
that's why I believe when you have your own sitter and you have it underlined, so then you're going to be able to remember and it's going to make a difference in the way you react. Now, I'll tell you something that really changed me. It was very, very traumatic when it happened. And even up till this day, up till this day, I still think about it. And it happened many, many years ago. It happened the days of 9-11. Now, some of you may remember when 9-11 happened, you know, it was a bright Sunday morning and all of a sudden the world turned over. The world would never, ever be the same after those terrible, terrible tragedies of the Twin Towers falling and the buildings in Washington and in Pennsylvania where the plane went down and just absolutely terrible. So I remember that day, Mrs. Raifal Shalom, she was, the pre she was the principal of Sheva High School. She called me and she asked me to come the next day to speak for the school. I had come many, many times to speak there in Sheva High School. And I said, listen, I'm confused myself. I don't know what in the world to say. You know, the whole world is turned over. And she said, no, Rabbi Cohen, I need you to come. You got to give the girls a perspective. I said, listen, I, I have to prepare. I have to speak to Rabbonim. I have to look at Svarim. Give me a couple hours and I'll get back to you. And I did speak to Rabbonim and I did look at Svarim and I, I came the next day. Now, this was the day after 9-11, okay? Now, she, as the principal, introduced me. And what she said, she only spoke about two minutes, but what she said was so powerful that it has affected me literally till this day. This is what she said. She said, girls, at the end of Elenu, in every single sitter, we have three paragraphs, Elenu, Alkinakava, and then there's a little paragraph that many, many people don't say. It's always in a different typeface. Altira. She says, girls, let's read it together. Altira me pachat pisaim. Do not be afraid of sudden terror, o mishoyas rishayim kisavoy, and the calamity of rishayim when it comes. We say to the goyim, utu eitzav asufa, you make a plan, but it's going to be annulled. Dabru dova, you have ideas v'lo yokum, and it's not going to withstand, it's not going to withstand like we said before, kiyum. Why kiyum onokel? Because they is just with us. And she said, just girls, just remember, Hashem is always with you. Don't be afraid to the point where you're going to be broken. Ki imanu kel, the Abishta is with us. I was so moved by that, that I decided from that mincha on, that afternoon, I would never, ever miss saying Altira. Now, of course, when you're macabre to do something, in the beginning you do miss a couple times, but now it's years, it's almost unheard of that I shouldn't say Altira. Now, years went by, and every time when I said Altira, I always wondered about the third Pusik. And Nebuch Nebuch, when Mrs. Reifer lost her life, and it was the Shleshim, and they asked me to come to Muncie to speak, and I told everybody the story that I told you because I felt that it was only because of her that I started saying Altira every day. But I also said to the people that the third Pusik puzzled me. And only when I did a lot of research into the Pusik and thought about it, did I come up with something that I have underlined in my sitter. And I think you should underline in your sitter. And I don't know, again, if, you know, Dr. Howie did that, but... Uh, Certainly, I could understand that he would do something like this. The third Pasuk, Hashem is speaking, and he's quoted in Yeshaya Hanavi, okay? And the Pasuk is like this. It's in Yeshaya Memvov Pasuk Dalet. And watch this. Hashem says the word I five times, five times. I'll read it in Hebrew, and then I'll translate. V'yad zikno anihu. What is Hashem saying? I, 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 I. What's going on in this Pasuk? And watch this. You know, we live in the me generation. Everybody's thinking about themselves. So Hashem, or Chazal, took this Pasuk and said, let me show you what it means. You see, Hashem is saying, I'll tell you what I is. I help, I care, I do. Viad Zikna, you're going to be old. Don't worry, Anihu, I'm, I'll be there for you. Don't worry, I don't get old, Hashem says. Viad Seva, you'll be elderly. Anihas Bal, I will endure together with you. Anihas Sisi, I made you. Anihas, I'll carry you. Vanihas Bal, Vamalit, and I'll save you. And that's what I think. And that's why I have the five Anis underlined in my sitter. Because many people feel, I need, I crave, I... 
whatever I want, right? But really what we should be saying is, I help, I do, I care. And that's what Hashem is saying. That's what the Anis are all about. And when you have it underlined in your sitter, and this is one of the final things that you're davening before you finish davening. So remember, you're going out to the world. Not I need, I crave, and I want. No, I do, I help, I care. And, you know, I'm sitting right here with Dr. Bennett's son. And, you can, and I can just tell you that Dr. Bennett, his Heiliger father, is somebody who lives by this. I care, I do, I help. I hope I didn't embarrass you or your father, but, you know, we're so proud that he's part of our community here in Queens. What a wonderful person. But that's really what we live for. That's what Hashem wants, that we should be out there. And that's why I believe from now on, Bli Neda, you should say from now on, because of, of the Feintach family and Dr. Howie Feintach, that we should all say Altira and his chus. And let it make a difference in the way we present ourselves to HaKadosh Baruch Hu and the way we present ourselves to the world. I just want to end with this thought and then a great story. There's a fascinating Gemara in Psachim Kuf Yutesamad Beis. The Gemara tells us that Asir HaKadosh Baruch Hu lasay suda la tzaddikim. The Ebesh is going to make a big suda at the end of time for the tzaddikim. And then at the end, take a look at it, it says... He's going to say, okay, I need somebody to bench. And Avram Avinu, uh, he's going to, Hashem's going to say, Avram Avinu, could you lead the benching? And he's going to say, no, not me. I had a son like Ishmael. And then uh, he's going to say, how about Yitzchak? And Yitzchak is saying, no, not me. I had a son like Esau. And then uh, Yaakov, well, you know, what about you? All your sons were tzaddikim. No, not me, because I married two sisters. And once the Torah was given, you know, I let him marry two sisters when they're both alive at the same time. And to me, this is the saddest. Moshe Rabbeinu, how about you, Benjamin? No, I never went to Eretz Yisrael. But I never had the schus of being in the Heilige Eretz Yisrael. I can't bench in front of all these tzaddikim. I can't lead the benching. Yeshua, okay, you. You took them into Eretz Yisrael. No, but the first mitzvah is to have children, a boy and a girl. I only had girls. So who's going to bench? Not Avram, not Yitzchok, not Yaakov, not Moshe. David Abel says, I was thinking, what do you mean? David Melech had three sons that were Rishayim. I didn't know. Avshalim. Um, I forgot the first one, the third one. I didn't know. Avshalim and Amnon. Right? So the three, they were terrible people. And some of them even wanted to kill their father. And not only that, Hashem said to him that you cannot build a base of Megdus because you killed so many people. And you, you, it'll be called base David because you raised the money for it, but Shlem Melech is the one who's going to be able to build it. Your son can build it, but you can't build it. So what do you mean he's going to bench? And I'll tell you what I think the answer is. You know what David Melech said? If you look in Hala, you'll see. He said, When I had Soros, when I had problems, I called to Hashem. But you know what he also said? When things were good, I also davened with the same intensity to Hashem. Of course, all of us, when things are difficult, we cry to Hashem and we daven with great intensity. But what happens when you got the shidduch and you got the job and you got the child and you got the house and you got the raise? So do we daven with the same intensity and saying thank you? Dovar HaMelech was able to do that. He said, I called to Hashem and Oh, if that's the case, oh, then you're the one that can bench. And that's what I think is so important, especially in the time that I am making this presentation. We're still in the thick of COVID. Baruch Hashem, we have the vaccine, and hopefully that'll be near the end of the whole thing. We'll be able to get rid of this. But the point is, of course, with Davning, because it. But we have to remember, so we all have many, many good things. Do we daven with the same intensity and saying thank you? That's what we have to do. And you know something that occurred to me? If you take a look in davening, or in halal actually, what do we say? Open up the gates of righteousness, the Beis Medrash and the Beis Aknesses. What am I going to do there? I'm going to thank Hashem. Many times we think we come to Shul to daven for what we need. Yeah, but look what David HaMelech is saying. I'm going to say thank you. That's what David HaMelech is saying. So we've spoken about many, many things. I just want to review very, very quickly. Let's talk about Avodah Shebelev. Let's talk about, as we said, coming early, as Dr. Feintach always did. Let's talk about, at the end I come, that fellow that's not good enough just to say that at the end he came. Let's remember there's a dress code. 
when you come to shul, and let's remember, of course, what filolti is, tefillah, talking and having machshava, exactly what you're saying. And you can add words, as the shloch told us, and Rabbi Yudah Chosset told us. Let's remember to underline, Baruch Goyze Mekayim, Harofi Lishur Eleiv. And let's remember to underline those words of Ani in Altira. And finally, just as we daven when it's difficult, let's daven. I just want to end with this beautiful story. In Dallas, there's a wonderful Rav. His name is Rabbi Arya Roden. And Rabbi Roden told me that when he first came from Chavetz Chaim in New York and then to open a shul, he opened it in his home. And one night he was preparing a lecture or one afternoon and a fellow Leonard Froman came in. And he never met this guy before. And Leonard said to him, you know, Rabbi, I would like to talk to you about religion. And they got into a whole conversation for almost an hour. And it was a fascinating conversation. And at the end, Leonard said, you know, Rabbi, I was so impressed with everything you told me. I'm going to send you $1,000 for the shul. And not only that, he sent him 2000 And he started coming to the shul, which was to the house of Rabbi Roden. And he got his friends. And eventually, they built the shul, which is still there today, the Young Israel of North Dallas. Now, unfortunately, Leonard never got married, and when he was 48, he had a massive heart attack and he passed away. And at his levaya, his mother got up and she said, I'm so grateful to Rabbi Roden and to your community because you helped bring my son Leonard back to his roots. And every penny that he gave, she matched it. So she gave the shul $50,000. She was so grateful. And then Rabbi Roden got up to speak. And he told me this is what he said. He said, the first time that Leonard came to my home, after we had the whole discussion, I said, Leonard, why'd you come to me? I've just got like a, a private house here that's the shul. You know, there's so many, many wonderful rabbis here in Dallas. And he said, I'll tell you why, Rabbi. He said, I just got back from Israel. And, you know, we went all over the place. I'd never been to Israel before. And the last night we were at the Kaisel. We were at the wall. Now, I didn't know how to pray. I just knew Shema Yisrael and take my name and put it on a piece of paper and put it in the wall. But I saw a guy praying right next to me. And he was praying with such intensity, I wished that I could pray like he did. And I was going to give him money, but... I was not nice. I didn't know him. He doesn't know me. It would be so uncomfortable. So when I came back to Dallas, I went into the bakery and I said to the man behind the counter, I said, you know, I just got back from Israel. There was a guy praying at the wall with such intensity. If that guy came to Dallas, what synagogue would he go to? And the guy behind the counter said, you know, he'd go to Rabbi Roden. So that's why I came to you. And look at that, Rabbi Roden said. He came to me and then eventually he brought his friends and we were able to build a building. So... When that Yid, who was dominating at the Kaisal, when he comes to Shemaim after 120 years, Hashem's going to say to him, Rabbi Yid, because you, were sure was built in Dallas. And he'll say, Hashem, what's Dallas? I heard of dollars. I never heard of Dallas. No. It was because of his davening. And that's the final lesson. The final lesson is that when you come to Shul, it's not only a privilege, it's a responsibility. The way you daven, the way you behave, the way you shut your phone, the way you come early, as Dr. Feintuch did, that's a responsibility. And that's a role model because we are each role models. And Dr. Feintach, you could say that about him. He was a role model when it came to tefillah. And that's why we dedicate these shiurim in his honor. Hashem should help the family. They should have the strength. They have went through that terrible gzeda nebuch of his passing away, but it should be and they should be so proud of everything that he stood for and the family that he built. And in that schus, his tefillahs and shemayim should be answered, our tefillahs should be answered, and we should all feel that great achrayis of what it means that we're able to daven and shul and be role models for others. Hashem should listen to our tefillahs l'tayv. Thank you for inviting me, and thank you for listening. Thank you, Rabbi Cron, for your tremendous, powerful words of inspiration on this very important topic about tefillah, about davening. We want to thank everyone for joining us tonight, this very special shir which was dedicated to Zecher Nishmas, Reb Tzvi Eliezer Moshe Ben Aaron Yosef, um, in memory of Dr. Feintuch, Zatzal, um, such, a, such a tremendous person. And um, as Rabbi Cron mentioned uh, briefly about him, about this, um, this really tremendous person who has such an impact in this world, and and Neshama uh, and, um, and we want to thank Nassau Epstein, um, and his whole entire family and, and, um, and the whole Feintuch family for really initiating this event, this amazing series, and for being um, um, 
for carrying on his tremendous legacy. This was presented by the Chazak organization, the Talis men in Torah anytime. Um, the Chazak organization really does so much for the Jewish community, organizing amazing student events every single night, just like tonight. And not only just like tonight, there's not only this year, there's also another year. Um, um, there's there's the, any night, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever it may be. There's not there's usually not only one shir, there's usually two, three, four, five shirim to really uh, inspire and uplift the Jewish community on so many variety, wide, wide variety of topics. They're really being there for the Jewish community. And Kazakh's main mission of Jewish public school student transfer to Yeshiva in the last three and a half years alone, Kazakh has transferred over 950 children from public school to Yeshiva, which is an unbelievable accomplishment. It's really it's really astonishing. And so I'm watching right now, you know, you know um, a child who has children in public school and would like to transfer yeshiva, Chazak will help them in that process. Reach out to Chazak, 718-285-9132, 718-285-9132, or email us at psty at chazak.org. That is spelled psty at chazaq dot org, psty chazak dot org. We want to remind everyone, um, about uh, the talisman, the Sal Epstein, who was, uh, was, uh, um, who was very instrumental not only in this event, but so many other amazing programs and initiatives for Kla Yisrael. And um, I was actually at his wedding this week, and it was a great simcha to be with him and his family, celebrating such an such a unbelievable occasion. Thank you, Nisano, for everything you do. And you can reach out to Nisano, the talisman, uh, for all your talis needs, sitzis needs, Judaica needs, whatever it may be. He's really an expert. He's top of, he's, he's, he's top of the line. Reach out to him, 856-745-9588, 856-745-9588. And um, obviously everyone should go to anytime.com for amazing shiram audio, video for men, women, children, everybody in between. Uh, speakers like uh, from Rabbanim, speakers, Godolim, Rabbitsons, everybody. It's unbelievable. Go to tarnytime.com for that. Everyone should tune in every Saturday night, every month to Shabbos at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for an unbelievable series called, um, called Turn Saturday Night into Motsu Shabbos. We have to really have to up our, it really is such an unbelievable series because it really gets your, your, your week started off the right, the right way with Dr. David Lieberman. He speaks about the topic of transforming relationships. People submit questions from all over the world. You don't miss it, <laughs> and uh, and followed by it's followed immediately by Rabbi David Goasser. He speaks about the topic of reviewing the secrets of life through Perkyevos. It's literally an unbelievable, life-changing series. This week is already the thirty-first week of the series, and 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 if anyone hasn't missed any any has 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 has, has hasn't jumped on um, on board for for the series, don't worry. It, you don't need to watch. You don't need to watch the previous ones. In order to, to to watch the upcoming Saturday night, each one is its own unique theme and topic, and it's it's unbelievable. Every 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 Saturday night, 8:30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, torrentytime.com/slash Chazak Live, or you can call in 718-298-2077, extension 46. Again, 718-298-2077, extension 46. And we want to remind everyone also that. That Chazak has a new WhatsApp broadcast where where you can where where you can sign up for amazing broadcasts like like Rabbi Heshi Kleiman Shlita, the found the the writer the, the um, of of the the powerful Praying with Fire series, and three times a week you can get a clip like that. You can hear about you can get a, a short video Chazak on the Parsha, in each speaker a, a new speaker every single week, um, a one two minute short clip, unbelievable way to. Get into Shabbos in the right way, uh, and uplift your Shabbos as well. You can hear about coming Chazak events, which is which are always so amazing, and um, for many and many other amazing broadcasts to sign up. And to sign up for that, you should um, you should me you should message the number on WhatsApp. The number is one second. The number is three four seven two six nine one four one six. Again on WhatsApp, message the words. Um, sign up to the to the to the number three four seven two six nine one four one six three four seven two six nine one four one six. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Have a great day. Have a great night, and thank you for joining us.